It's been a while since I made some video tutorials, so I'll try not to screw up too bad, so just bear with me. So let's make a new project, and let's just name this server. And let's import a couple of things. And now let's create a new socket. Press family, internet network, socket type, dot stream, protocol type, dot TCP. This creates a basic TCP socket. And now let's bind it. New IP endpoint, 0, 94, and sock, dot listen. Zero. So what this does is this binds the socket to a certain port. Now they'll say it binds to a new IP endpoint, but the way this is being done, it just binds it to that port, so it accepts any connection that comes in. So a connection that comes from the web to your router, and then it's made on this certain port, it'll be directed to this socket. And listen, we'll just basically does what it says, it puts it in a listening state ready for connections. Now what most beginners would do is they'll try and do this when they use bind. I mean that seems like it would be right but if you do this and connections start coming in then this socket will only accept connections from this IP address. So for example you don't have to type this out, just using this as an example. Okay, now, we have our listener, and it's uh, bound to this port, or to this IP endpoint, which is 127.0.0.1, the local machine address, and our port of 1994. And then it listens, and zero just means there's no queue, so it'll accept any connection that comes in, and there won't be queued, blah, 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 technical stuff. You can read up about that later on. And I'm just creating a new thread, because this blocks until a connection is made so it'll set our accept variable to the newly created socket and then this will connect to our listener so if we run this oops, wait so you guys can see and if we debug this you can see a connection was made now because it was um, connected from this IP address. So if we try to connect to say which is on the same machine but when the connection is made the IP address will be identified as this. And if we debug this a connection wasn't made because it's waiting for this IP address. Now if we use IP address parse or we use just plain old zero which is what I prefer, which means the same thing any IP address. 
then a connection can be accepted from anywhere. So now that we have that, well now that you guys have seen that, let's go back to what we were doing before. Alright, now socket accept equals socket dot accept. And you've seen this before, this will block until a connection is made and accepted. And now let's do a little receiving. So let's create a new buffer, byte array, buffer equals um, encoding dot fault dot get bytes. Hello. Mm. CC's hello world. And now we'll send this to our client that's connected. Send buffer zero buffer dot length and zero. So what this is is it's going to send the byte array, the offset, which will start at zero, which would be the H in hello world, and the buffer dot length, which is twelve, the length of the byte array, and socket flags zero is the same as socket flags dot none. I just put zero since it's easier. And now we have to make a new buffer when we receive data equals new byte two five five or you could just reuse um, our old buffer. Let's do that just for memory wise. Equals new byte two fifty five then int res equals accept dot receive buffer zero buffer dot length and zero. So what this does is that it'll wait for data that comes in from the client or from the connected socket, I should just say that, and it'll store it in this buffer. Now what this variable is is this will store the actual amount of data that's read. So let's say our byte array is 255. Now if they send, if the client sends 20 bytes, then it'll be filled with just 20 bytes, but then the rest will just be white spaces. And we don't need that. So we use we're gonna use this variable to resize the buffer to only show or to only keep what we need. So after we receive the data then you can either do this manually or you can use array.resize which is what we'll do for now ref our buffer and the new size which is rest so if our buffer size is 255 and then we resize it to what we actually received example 20 bytes then it'll be resized down to 20 bytes and then let's write to the console what we received get string buffer and then after we receive the data we write to the console and then the console will just wait for input and then it'll close so this is our basic server connection oops right, let's clean up everything socket.close accept.close and then the console will wait for input and then it'll close so this is our basic server and next tutorial we will code our client